To give batters a different look, pitchers throw a changeup. Your idea of a different look is sunglasses. That's true. But La Quinta Inns and Suites is really taking the different look thing to a new level. Definitely a major league makeover, starting with a bolder, brighter lobby full of comfortable spaces to let you settle in. Or chill out in front of a big, flat screen like Wingo would. Oh, you know it. It's a changing La Quinta look to help you get in the zone and look sharp when you hit that big meeting. Prepare to win at business with La Quinta Inns and Suites. Book now at LQ.com. Golgan Wingo with you on ESPN Radio and ESPN News, presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests join us on the Shell Penzoil Performance Line. Mike Golick, Trey Wingo, Taylor Twelman joins us in studio, our soccer analyst, uh, to give us a straight talk, brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless, best phones, best networks, no contracts. Taylor, we got a lot to get into here, but most importantly, can you break down the England-Tunisia match? It is a yeah, critical, no problem. It is a yeah, critical no match for us. Ha, ha, I think you guys should. Why? Who, wh- where are we I, I, here Well, see, this? here's the deal. We, 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 we did a fantasy Ooh. draft. Okay, we did a fantasy draft, every the World Cup fantasy draft, and I thought I had a really good weekend because Mexico beat Germany and uh, Switzerland got the tie with Brazil. Ronaldo totally, you know what, me by the hat trick. Uh, so how how do you win this? Explain it real quick. We're, we're scoring points. it just like just like they're scoring three, three points, points for, for a win, win one, one point for, for a tie. Oh, I, like, for a tie. I like both yeah. of your teams. Really? I like both. We're of in teams. last place right now. Yeah, we're in, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. I still that's right now. Like the staff teams. has ten <laughs> points. My son has eight points, and Trey and I have six points. Yeah, but, yeah, but and, I, and we, I said, we got a lot of time. A lot of time left. A lot of time. I said all along my first round was crafted clearly with the idea of England beating Tunisia. I mean, that's that that gets me three points and puts you're going to be sweating it for about eighty. Eight minutes, and I think England wins one zero late. But it's going to be that kind of game. Yes! There you go. See, it's going to be that kind is, of game. My strategy is paying off. We'll get into all of that with Taylor in a minute. But first, we got to get through what's trending, and we start with the big news from the big guy, although not as big as we think he is, Mike, because he's looking at other golfers. Yeah, Brooks Kepka wins the U.S. Open for the second year in a row, first time since Curtis Strange at the end of the eighties. But I thought he looked, to me, when I looked at uh, Brooks Kepka, he looked about 6'2", 6'3", about 220. He thought he was like a linebacker. Nope. Looks really good. Yeah. He's six foot six one, about 185. So that just means all the other golfers are really, really small. Save for Dustin Johnson, his workout buddy. Dustin's 6'4". Correct. And those guys like it when they golf in the afternoon because then they can work out together in the morning. That's serious. They're that, that, really good friends absolutely here. absolutely true. But congrats uh, to uh, Kepka for... Uh, really, the Saturday when it was a massacre for everybody, including your leader, Dustin Johnson, who was seven over, he was only, what, two over, three over? I mean, only, only a couple of strokes, but he was tied for the lead uh, going into that last round because of it when, when everybody else was just falling apart on Saturday, even though he shot over par on Saturday. And a congrats to Tommy Fleetwood and what he did going seven no under. No question. I mean, incredible. And missed what we, the way he was putting what looked like a gimme putt on 18 to make it a 62. If so, he'd have been in that, uh, what, what is it now? Two hole playoff? Yes. The possibility playoff, yes. of, uh, of that. But, uh, Kepka, your back to back winner. It was great. Unfortunately, there's more to the this U.S. Open with how tough the course was and what Phil Mickelson did on Saturday. Well, I know Taylor's a big <clears throat> golfer, so Taylor, what did you think of Mickelson hitting a Don't get me ball? started right now. Oh, really? seriously? Yeah. This early? Oh, yeah. yeah. What's rule 1-2? Uh, breach of Gosh. etiquette. Yeah, yeah. No yeah. right? So, so f- for the life of me, what I don't understand go, is that if the, it is a sport <clears throat> built on honesty and you refing yourself. Correct. So how does he not DQ himself? And you want the answer on how Phil felt? Yeah. Did he speak to media after the round yesterday? Of course he did. No, oh, he no, didn't. Yesterday, I think it was Saturday. Saturday. Why yeah. didn't he do it yesterday? Exactly. Because the number one question is going to be what? Phil, why didn't you DQ yourself? Correct. And now, if I'm a PGA Tour and Pro on 15 at Augusta, <clears> if I chip a ball over the green and I was running towards the water in order to save myself, I'm going to sprint over there, knock the ball back, Save myself and say, wait, you just set the precedent right now. Yeah, see, where I don't agree with that is because everybody in golf. Taylor coming in hot, by the way. Everybody in golf. First, number one, rules of etiquette is now a gray area, right? Now it is. It always was. You tell me your definition of etiquette and mine are two different things. If you exert any kind of mobility or movement that changes the way you play the game, rule 1-2, well, th- you can be disqualified. That's different than etiquette. You started with etiquette, and etiquette is a gray area. Okay, you want to give enough. you want to give enough. me yeah, whether enough. you stop the ball or the move one. the ball, then you're talking about fair a enough. rule. Fair enough. And, and I guess yeah. my thought is, while I kind of I chuckled at what Phil did, but I get it as far as the seriousness of what he did. 
everybody in golf can't stand him for what he did. So that's why I don't think this is going to become a thing in golf because people in golf know how egregious it was. Yeah. So who is going to really want to say, I'm going to go, he's going to become a verb and Mickelson this thing outside of a hack like me who does it. I've done that. 20 times anyway, but it doesn't matter. And I never but I, give you the two but I don't. But, <laughs> but I don't think a pro, because aren't all the pros killing Phil for this? Killing them, yes. So I don't think any of the pros are going to go out there in the Masters and do that same thing. No, but Lee Westwood <clears throat> tweeted exactly the scenario I just gave you, is that what would stop me from on 15 at Augusta if I literally chip a ball that's what he well, talked about and when i used when i thought of lee westwood's tweet i said it's a very good enough because that's exactly the type of scenario that phil mickelson was in i yeah. guess you just make it you make it concrete that you get dq'd yeah. for something like well, that, that ends everything, normally, right? then it normally ends that's the case yeah, that's yeah, the thing yeah. but then the, it ends the other everything. thing there yeah. is the usga and their <laughs> rules are not the same governing Agreed. body of the of, the, of, the, of augusta too. ah it's kind of like uh, a household in parenting yes, uh, what's one rule another rule good cop which is gray area like you said and yeah. the fair, a lot of people think Tiger Woods should have been DQ'd from the Masters a few years ago yep. when he took that, uh, what is deemed to be an illegal drop, changes four to an eight. I think it was 2013. I can't remember the, the exact, I think it was 2013. It might have been 2012. Uh, and they <clears throat> found a way to keep Tiger in the tournament. We, we said if there was a golfer named Milt Tickleson instead of Phil Mickelson, he probably would have been DQ'd, right? <laughs> I mean, the fact that it was Phil Mickelson probably kept him in the tournament. Of course it did. Of course it, of course did. it did. Especially when they're getting withering criticism from the setup of the course. They didn't want to. Which oh, is part the of the reason why, Dre, he yeah. did it. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Oh, he, he was, Without this a doubt. was a, this was a blatant, hey guys, this is yeah. what I think of how you set up the course. No question about it. All right, glad we got that settled. Uh, two years for free agency in a robust quarterback market. Ben Roethlisberger says he isn't concerned with landing a record deal because, well, he has two years left on his contract. Plus, he says, I can care about record-breaking Super Bowl wins and things like that. That's more important to me. Yeah. Of course, we always know... Uh, Ben, uh, the question is, how long is he going to play? Well, and, and he brought that on himself. And, and now that he's kind of changed his tune on that about his offensive line, if they're healthy, I want to keep playing. Two more years, 23 mil per year. So nice paycheck is coming. A lot of this on the heels of what everybody's being paid now and now the potential of what Aaron Rodgers is going to get paid. So 30. it's always then the next quarterback after that great quarterback, what are they going to get paid? And this has just been saying, ah, it doesn't matter so much. We'd rather, hey, you know, I guess you like to hear that from the team aspect of let's make it Super Bowl wins and not so much money because you know what he's he's getting paid good money now but I also understand if you make a lot of money there's nothing wrong with wanting more, more. of that yeah, well, as well what's enough the answer is always more yeah, right the yeah. answer is always more right. uh and uh, look there was a there was a few year stretch where I believe Eli was making more than Peyton um yeah that should probably never happen uh it's so, timing we yeah, all know yeah. it's time it's true in all sports when it's you all kick timing. the can and say whatever you want about Brady, he's never been the highest paid quarterback in the NFL. He's mm-hmm. always managed to work that contract to be very uh, team friendly. You think Aaron Rodgers will be the highest paid quarterback in the NFL? Hold on, let me think. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, wow. Ownership, I mm-hmm. think, is what he should be mm-hmm. seeking. As we continue here on Golik and Wingo, brought to you by La Quinta Inns and Suites. Book at LQ.com and win a business. We could talk to soccer analyst Taylor Twelman forever about golf because I know he's a big golf guy. <laughs> there is this World Cup thing going on. Maybe. So so we get into that. First of all, so you feel I'm good with England over Tunisia. I do. I right? do. Yeah, this is, is Vardy the... going to score? Uh, I hope Vardy plays because I think he's a little bit more dynamic in this game. But yeah. to give it to you, Tunisia is going to park a bus, a yeah. 747, everything they can to stop England going forward. Yeah. I think Vardy's going to score, if not Harry Kane. Well, if I you had to take one or the other, Kane or Vardy, who are you more likely? Kane. Kane? All right, taking Kane. All, All right, right. Fine. We're good. so we certainly want to get into the games England, that are going Tunisia. on again because of our snake draft here. We uh, Trey, myself, my son, and the staff four different teams. Everybody has eight teams. Okay. You, you've taken a quick look at the teams. Who do you think kind of has the advantage I right now? I still think you two do. Be, Me I, and I, Trey. Yeah. Yes, I think Belgium's going to have a result, so you're yeah. good there. I think Spain, even though they tied Portugal three <laughs> three, I still think Spain is. Going to be in the World Cup final, so I, you guys are okay. Right now, the staff leads with ten points. Uh, Mike and Devin have eight, and Trey and I have six. So, yeah, we'll but that's because Russia won five zero exactly against right. Saudi yeah, Arabia. Give so, me a break so with that. Come who on. picks Russia anyways Bef- in this? Before exactly. we get into a conversation about that one, what's going on on the field? <laughs> we we have to continue to ask the U.S. soccer. You know, yep. not in this. Why aren't they in this? And how close are they to being mm, where they boy. where? We, you all want them, and we all want them to be. Ask me about Phil Mickelson. It's yeah. more fun. Uh, <laughs> well, it's you, a, you went off. You went off pretty strong when yeah. we did lose to. Was it Trinidad and Tobago? Yeah, Trinidad was, Tobago's yeah. third string for the record. Yeah. yeah, not their first string. Their third string. That's important. Uh, neither here nor there. It's difficult 
uh, honestly, guys, it, it's difficult to put into words what the feeling is for a lot of us that have re- uh, that have worn the red, white, and blue to sit here and say, in this region with Mexico and Costa Rica and Panama, where we've dominated over the last 20 years, and this conversation of we want to compete against Messi, Argentina, Colombia's of the world, and we can't beat Trinidad's third team? Yeah. Like, it's a real wake-up call. But for the American sports fan, it happened in Europe for Germany, and it happened 14 years ago. And after they had the debacle of the European championships, they came together, they wrote a 10-year plan. Guess what happened 10 years later? They won the World Cup. So I hope, and I'm not saying the United States is going to win the World Cup. That's not what I'm saying. But I hope, Mike and Trey, that you they look at this and say, you know what? This is the moment that we regroup. We look ourselves in the mirror and say, we've got to change a couple of things. And we've got to really look at how we develop players. Okay, what do they need to do? You said, look in the mirror, we need to change things. What do they need to do? They've got to change the focus <laughs> about making money and developing. Why is our sport, my sport, the only sport in our country that is so pay to play and it's exclusive, not inclusive? So the, the most difficult thing, and you know this, you don't have to be a soccer, you could be a soccer dad, you could be a, just an American citizen that looks at soccer in our country. It's a privileged sport. That's first and foremost. It's a suburban white sport. You need, you have to pay coaches. You have to pay fields. I can go on and on and on. I'm not going to ruin the radio show with this. That's, no, that's first and job. foremost. Yeah. <laughs> but think of Iceland because I'm looking over here and someone's got Iceland. That's right? me, you got Iceland. Yeah. Let's yeah. go. That's the same size of Corpus Christi, Texas. Right. If you want to get the highest level of coaching in Europe in Iceland, it costs you roughly a thousand dollars. If you want to get that exact same coaching license in the United States of America, it costs you forty thousand dollars. Travel. Going through the process, follow where I'm going. Yes. Yeah. So Iceland, 15 years ago, said if we're going to maximize our 330,000 population, we've got to make the coaches easily accessible. They've got to all be better coaches. That's just one example yeah. compared to what we're doing here. If that makes any sense, it does. No, it does. The, yeah. the Iceland coach is a dentist. It's a dentist, dentist. Yeah. right? I mean, I mean, his actual job is a dentist. Coaching the World Cup team of the national team is is actually his side job. Okay. So speaking of Iceland. Uh, they were interesting in the first round. They got the draw with Argentina because Messi came up short on a free kick Mm -hmm. and a penalty kick. And you know the rap of both Ronaldo and Messi that they've come up short uh, on the big stages. Finally, uh, Ronaldo got Portugal to the Euros in 2016. Then, ironically, or whatever you want to call it, he got injured and they went on to win that game and win the Euro win the Euros. He comes through with a hat trick for the ages against Spain, which really killed me in the first (laughs) round. But Messi comes up short again. And everyone knows Messi is... How unbelievable he is. Does he need a seminal moment in this World Cup to cement his legacy? Well, he went to the final in 2014, won the golden ball. But you just hit the nail on the head. He didn't win it. Diego Maradona won it. And for all the trials and tribulations that Diego Maradona has had in his life, he's still 1A and Messi's 1B, no matter how you slice it. (laughs) Why is Ronaldo scoring a hat trick in the first game? Because all the pressure is off of him. He's won the major championship with the European Championship. So I don't find it ironic that he has that kind of game against one of the favorites in Spain. So when I look at Messi, is it unfair? Sure, but life isn't life isn't always fair. And that's kind of the 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 burden he carries right now. But we're taken away with what Iceland did. Iceland in the Euros, Cristiano Ronaldo had ten shots, no goals. Right. In the World Cup two years later, Messi had eleven shots, no goals. It's more about what Iceland did than it is what Argentina didn't. And I think that's what needs to be the storyline. But as we all know, yeah. the superstars take the headlines, yeah. and Messi didn't show up. Yeah, this is the LeBron-Michael Jordan situation sort of with these two guys going forward. How big was the upset of Mexico over Germany? Massive. CONCACAF had never beaten Germany in this stage. No, nope. Massive, massive, Trey. It's hard to put into words because when you look at what Mexico's <laughs> done in the World Cup, this may be their biggest moment. This group, if you finish second more often than not, as you guys look at your board, you're playing Spain in the round of 16. Yeah. In the last six World Cups from Mexico, round of 16, they go home. So that's been their nemesis. They want to win this group. I didn't think they could get three points. But what's more shocking is how old, slow, anemic, one-dimensional Germany looked throughout the entire game. It looked like they were running in quicksand. It was remarkable to me that Yugi Love got completely outmanaged by Juan Carlos Osorio. But I warn everyone, Mexico traditionally will then lay an egg and they have a flat performance because they've put all this into one basket. They've got to make sure they at least get a point in the next game. So quickly on Germany, because I talk a lot in sports about the mental side of things. And we just talked about it with golf when the course is so tough mentally, how you handle it. 
How do they handle a Germany after getting upset like this? And obviously they, they can still put themselves in a great position, but from a soccer player standpoint, when you lose a game like yeah, this. Goal, okay, I, the one thing you don't have to worry about Germany is mentality. And quite honestly, you just punch them right in the face. I'd be scared if I was if Sweden, South Korea, because now Germany looks at it and says six points were going through. Uh, Sweden's going to be a more difficult task for Germany than they think. They obviously got past Italy to get to this stage. But I'd be scared of Germany because Yugi Love has hit, he's pushed all the right buttons with this situation. I wouldn't be shocked if a couple of those old slow players are out of the lineup. He brings in a little bit more youth. I'd be stunned if Germany doesn't get through. And quite honestly, I'd still be shocked if Germany doesn't win the group. I still think Mexico is going to finish with four or five points. They're not going to finish with six. And I see Germany win in their last two games. Right, Makes so- it more interesting. It absolutely does as our soccer analyst Taylor Twelman is here in studio with us. So if we're talking about Mexico, I have to bring this up. What is going on with uh, former U.S. soccer oh, star Landon Donovan openly saying, hey, people should pull for Mexico? I mean, what was your reaction reading it? Uh, I was a little taken aback, actually. And, I, and then he sort of went back and forth with some people. I, 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 for t- former, with former teammates. <clears throat> yes, exactly. Right. It, but it, before I was really diving into it, when I, when I first saw it, I thought, well, all right, the U.S. isn't in it, so is he just picking somebody else to root for? But yep. how deep does it go? Go like it'd be like uh, Notre Dame rooting for Michigan in the BCS. Would you do it? Would you hold up a Michigan flag? For for me, it would be more USC, which I couldn't okay, do. Fine. But, but my, yeah, my apologies with yeah. the analogy. I'm with you. Couldn't do it. <laughs> You'd throw up before couldn't you do, do it. it. As yeah. I tweeted, I'd rather cut off a toe <laughs> than root for Mexico. Yeah. It's the same Mexican team that when we were playing at Aztec and Obama gets. Elected, they're screaming mm. Osama. Yeah. Like it, it, it's a healthy, it's healthy to be rivals. It's right. no problem with it. Everyone has their own price tag, apparently. Whoa! But, uh, but I'm going to finish it with this because a former teammate of ours, Carlos Bocanegra, tweeted Landon Donovan. Landon went from zero to a hundred about building bridges, not barriers, about Mexican Americans and whatnot. <laughs> And yet this is the same guy that questioned German Americans and whether or not they were passionate enough to wear the red, white, and blue. I'm confused. All I'm saying is I'm not going to root for Mexico. That's the same team that tried to literally kick our rear ends in World Cup qualifying. That's the same team that the players tried to break my leg playing. Why do I have to root for him? It's healthy. It doesn't mean I hate Mexican Americans. It right. doesn't mean we need to build a wall. I'm not saying that. It's healthy. It's a rivalry. It's a rivalry. But in 2018, <clears throat> apparently we can't do this. But I'll leave it with this for you guys. When you, what would you do if Messi was holding up a Brazilian flag yesterday? It would never happen so because is, it's healthy. He's not saying anything about Brazilians. Is this just Mexico? What What if Landon was, you know, had a deal and to root for Portugal? <laughs> Completely yeah. different. Okay, Completely all right. different okay. because that is our bitter rival. That right. is our rival. Okay. The other Understood. aspect of this that the listeners need to know this is Wells Fargo fired 5,000-plus employees for creating fake accounts. They were fined $1 billion. Majority of those people, customers, Mexican-Americans. I'll leave it at that. So it just came across as extremely tone-deaf to me, but it's all for me about a rivalry. I don't care how much money you ask me. I'm not rooting for Mexico. I'm sorry, but as an analyst, I'll tip my cap and say, well done, but I'm red, white, and blue. I wore red, white, and blue. And I can't look at the American soccer fan and sports fan and say, guys, we're not there. So let's root for Mexico. Where are your green and red and white? Yeah. No, yeah. I'm not doing it. That's, that, that's I'm a sorry. line a lot of people don't want to It'd be like asking me, Trey, yeah. to throw in a Cubs hat right now growing up in St. Louis. <laughs> yeah, that's not happening. No, zero point zero chance. <laughs> that, that's the, that's the other, I'm glad you brought that up because the, the whole St. Louis thing, they, that is the soccer – a lot of people think it's a soccer capital. The 94 team, I think, was half you guys, yeah. right? It was you, Sorber, McKenna. All the, I mean, it's unbelievable how many of those guys were on that 94 team. Okay, you, you mentioned Germany. You, th- you still think Germany's going to be okay. Brazil, a tie with Switzerland. Yeah. How are you? How much are you concerned about Brazil, the second betting favorite going in? Uh, anxiety, pressure. I don't think any of us in this room, and I know Golik played at the highest level, and I've played at the highest level, and Trey, we've, we all do things. Pressure's one thing. When you lose four years ago, 7-1 on the national Brutal. stage at home, I don't think people fully understand the magnitude and what that did to the people of Brazil, let alone these players. Now, it's a different team, so they're a little bit more balanced. I think it's their best team they've had in the last five World Cups. But my goodness, there's pressure. You're up 1-0 against Switzerland. They completely outplayed them. I looked at a couple people in the green room, and I said, they're going to win this game 2-3-0. But then Neymar starts doing his tricky-dicky stuff, and then all of a sudden in the corner, Switzerland comes in. Now it was a foul, and video review should have changed it. Besides the point, the end score, 1-1. 
pressure and anxiety on Brazil is unlike any other team in this world, and I think that showed it in the second half against Switzerland. So as far as overall, I don't know how many teams you have in like a top tier. Like these are the absolute one, two, three teams. I have teams. probably three favorites. All right, so after those three in that next group, which team could win the whole thing? People are going to laugh at this because I don't have France in my Brazil, Spain, Germany before the tournament, but France is easy. I've heard that from a lot of people, actually, yep. France. Yeah. France is the most, Trey, France is the most talented team there. Golik, uh, but they always have a mentality thing. You asked about mentality. Right. Germany doesn't have to worry about France does. The French do. Yeah. The French do. And that's just, I have France. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear. <sighs> but the thing is, though, they're the most talented team there. So if they get it all together and come together for three and a half weeks, then it, besides the point, if they get along the rest of But 2010, guys, in the World Cup in South Africa, they walked off the field. Yeah. Boycott it. So yeah. you don't expect the unexpected with the French, but they're the one team where – if they click and do everything right, they could run away with All this right. tournament. Okay. We, we were in Paris actually on a vacation during the 2006 World Cup, and everyone was at Allez Les Bleus. That's yep. all they were screaming everywhere. And then they got to the final, and somehow uh, it Well, Zidane headbutted. Yeah, <laughs> that was not the greatest thing he like ever done. I like how you just glossed right over yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Kind of lost his mind. You know what? He pulled a Mickelson. He on the pulled a Mickelson. There you pulled, go. Pulled Zidane. a Mickelson. Or you could say Mickelson pulled a Zinedine Zidane. Might yeah. be a better way to say it chronologically. But Zidane didn't have the choice of whether or not to DQ himself. Correct. That is true. But more importantly, I'm good with England over Tunisia, right? Yeah, you're be fine. It's making my day. You're getting your three I points. Gotta when get they my tie points. zero zero today, yeah. lose my number. Don't yeah. Done. <laughs> Deleted. Taylor Twelman with us. <laughs> Thanks, Listen, man. thank you for that. We're, we're going to have you back for more of a breakdown. This was awesome. No problem, boys. Is your home an ADT home? If not, you have to get ADT and help protect against break-ins, fire, and carbon monoxide. For a limited time, get ADT's lowest rate starting at just $28.99 a month from the most trusted name in home security. Go to ADT.com slash podcast to take advantage of ADT's lowest rate. With 36-month monitoring contract, early termination and installation fees apply. Excludes taxes and fees. Applies to traditional services only. Certain markets excluded. Licenses available at ADT.com. Hey everyone, Mike Golick here. Support for the Golick Wingo podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Chances are you're confident when it comes to your work, your hobbies, your life. Rocket Mortgage gives you that same level of confidence when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your existing home loan. Rocket Mortgage is simple, allowing you to fully understand all the details and be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash mics. Equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, NMLS, consumeraccess.org number 3030. Golik and Wingo, ESPN Radio, ESPN News. We want to know on uh, on our voicemail line, 860-506-5505, what did you think of, of Phil's actions on Saturday? And, Mike, we do have a voicemail here, not about Phil, but about what we're doing with our snake draft in the World Cup. Hey, could you guys clarify how you're going to keep score for your World Cup tournament? I'm very looking forward to it. Yeah, gotta speak English. Anyway, I'd like to know how you're going to score, how you actually become the winner. Are you taking the points your team gets for victory draws? Man, I'm a babbler. We're all that's babblers. Nice. So we do, listen, we do this every day. Yes, and they pay yeah, us for it. So that's you exactly feel, right. You should feel good about yourself. Very simple. Just yeah. you, you pull up any standings, you see the points. That's how we're going to do it. A win is three points. A draw is one point. And you get nothing for a loss. Yeah. So that's how we're doing it throughout. And right now, the staff has 10 points. Uh, Junior, I guess we're putting Devin with Junior because Devin picked Junior's team, so they're Correct. now a team. Devin and Junior have eight points. Trey, you and I have six points. Yeah, Again, but this we're, was we're all just, set up for the English Tunisian match. We're just starting out yeah. now, and so we want every game to matter, so that's how we're doing it. Three points for the win. One point for the draw, no points. Yeah, and, and it carries loss. over into the knockout round. Yes, it so does. basically, all the points that we garner through uh, through group play will right. carry over. Yeah, absolutely with our right. Hang on, hang on. So if Tunisia beats England today, like they're going to, and they get Stop three it. points, yeah, then the championship match is also only three points. Yes. Yeah. Every win is only three. Every points. win is three points. Every win along the way is three I mean, points. If, if this not, isn't they're, hard. They're, 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 yeah. I mean, no, I'm not saying it's difficult. <laughs> I'm just saying I feel like you should be more rewarded for winning the entire thing. No, you win, you get three points. Beating England today, you win, you get well, three points. Not, so I'm not worried about it. You Harry know what? Kane. If you're playing I'm in, riding a, my in a regular Can you season, name anyone else? If, if, if you Hardy. if you if you score a goal in any regular Paul season McCartney. anywhere and score a goal in the in the World Cup, is it both one point? There you go. That's all I got to say. You know what yeah. I'm saying? If you also, score a touchdown in the regular season and a touchdown in the Super Bowl, are they the same amount of points. Same amount of points, okay. but you get a trophy for one. That's all. 
We get Don't the trophy. Worry. Yeah. You know what the trophy is? The cash. Yeah. We got to figure out what the winner gets or what right. I'm going to get when I win. I think we I'm split a goal at paycheck. I think that's no, our I'm new done, system. Yeah, I'm done with putting my paycheck on the line because at some point I'll lose that. Again, we're probably going to do it tomorrow. Uh, we're, we're looking to do it tomorrow. Tony Finau and his buddy, who was a, as a minor league baseball player, they set the world record. Yep. Finau hit a 110 yard shot, had to pa- go over a line, and that a dude caught 12 of them. And that was in, a what, in a minute was in it? one minute. Yeah. The world record to which Devin and my son Mike said. Piece of cake. Yeah, right. So we are holding their feet to the fire. They are going to embarrass themselves probably tomorrow after the show. We're looking to do it tomorrow, Wednesday after the show. Yep. Where Devin's going to hit the shots. Mike's going to try and catch them. I'm putting the over under at three and a half balls that are actually caught. The bet is if they get the world record, I am taking one of my paychecks, splitting it, and giving them each half of it. And Which, by the way, even if they win, is not happening. Let's be clear. No, it's going to happen. No, it's not. Yeah, it will. No, it won't. So don't tell my wife. There you go. And when they lose, Chris, don't they have to wash my car for a month, which would be three, four washings yeah. in Speedos. Okay, how is that a win for you? That's what I can't It's not a win out. for me. It's a, it's a win for... You lose either way. No. That, that's what I can't they get to, out here. Then There's no win for you. They here. get embarrassed, which is what I want, because everybody sees their Speedo bodies. Yes, but you'll be there watching it no, as I well. Don't. Why do car. I have to be there? Well, I'll drop it's the car, car off and I'll leave. Now, how, then how do you know they actually did it? I don't care. They're in there. There'll be, they'll be pictures. It's, it's integrity. We're going to the integrity of the car wash bed. And, and they have to use their bodies as the rags and wash their car with... All right, I'm, that's too far now. That's a little much. By the way, we do have <laughs> yeah. a voicemail in on Phil. We wanted to know what you thought of it. Again, we had uh, Brandel Shambly on talking about it. He thought he should have been uh, disqualified or withdrew himself. We'll have Brad Faxon coming up a little later on from Fox Sports. Taylor Twelman was all in on it. Uh, 860-506-5505. Here is somebody else's take on it. Each year, the PGA tries to bring down the field of athletes that play golf today by tricking up the course and making it almost unplayable. I think Phil just got tired of it. You know what? We've all had those moments, and as far as him being DQ'd, its names always get the get the benefit of the doubt, just the way it is in everything. Well, he's right on that. A couple things I want to clarify. It's not the PGA. The no, PGA has nothing to do with this. This is right. the United States Golf Association. Two separate the entities. PGA is the Professional Golfers of America, and the PGA Tour is separate <laughs> right. from the PGA. So yeah. uh, I understand what he's saying. This is the USGA. They control our national championships, whether it's women's, juniors, or men's. And but, but but sitting there and saying Phil did it to kind of, you know, for lack of a better term, flip oh. off. The, you know, the, the, why, why would you do something like that and embarrass yourself for it? I right. think he did it out of frustration. I think he just and if he, a brain, And you if know he what? just said that afterward, I think a lot of people would have put it to rest a little quicker. They'd still be offended that he did it, but his explanation of he had this rule in his hip pocket, he kind of knew what he was doing, was completely, you know, uh, 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 thrown not, away, right. knocked out because of what they actually were talked about after of not knowing what was going to go on, whether it's DQ'd or not. Yeah. But I'm trying to find out, and the only thing I've heard maybe is, as far as a comparison, one of the other oh, sports. I've got a good one. And, and it's talk about coming off the sideline in football, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> uh, if, uh, if you don't remember, after Super Bowl, or at the end of Super Bowl 47, between the Ravens and the 49ers, the, the they just stopped him on fourth down, the Ravens' defense, and it was 34-29. They took the safety to make it 34-31 to get a free kick to get it out, out right. past midfield. And the only way, really, that the uh, the 49ers could win the game was if that touchdown uh, punt was returned for, for a touchdown. touchdown. Right. Joe Flacco was mic'd up during that game, and he said, hey, man, if he looks like he's even coming close to scoring, I'm going to run on the field and tackle him. Yeah. And then what can they do? Well, what can they do? Because right, because then it was. Just, I don't know what it is now. I yeah. think it was just a penalty. Yeah, you know. But I don't think you. But if you're running unabated and get tackled, would they give them the touch? I don't know if that rule changed or not. To be honest with you, but that that's about as close as I've seen of anybody tweeting right. to try because it's tough to make a comparison to this because it's not in the normal context of the sport right. just as coming off the sideline and tackling someone wouldn't be as well and if you did it would it have to be a star in yeah. football to do it because well, well, just like we're talking about here if you don't really know the person that did this you dq him and you never hear from it again yeah. but it's phil so that's why it garners the headline yeah and look they're going to play the old man soundtrack here but this actually did happen once in a college bowl game in the 1940s, a running back for Rice named Dick Nagel, there you go, <laughs> oh, was yeah. was running for a touchdown, and an Alabama player came off the bench and tackled him. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think it was in the late 40s, and actually stopped him from scoring. Uh, I 
they didn't award him the touchdown. It was a penalty, but he literally came yeah. off the bench and tackled the guy. As far guy. as I'm concerned, no matter if that happens, no matter where the guy is, that you, be, you yeah. should get a touchdown. Yeah, that'll I'd that'll agree. stop you from coming off. You know they're going to get yeah. a touchdown. You're not going to come off the sideline. Well, that, Flacco was mic'd up, and he said, "What can they do?" Yeah, you know. So if he's coming, I'm going off the bench, I, and I'm going to tackle him. I have him. no idea, as I said, if they change that rule or not. But yeah. it, it should be in stone. We got a researcher. If, Brent, if you look come at that. off the sideline and purposely tackle somebody, I don't care where you are on the field, you should get the Wait, touchdown. He's reaching for the microphone. I think we have. Clarity. Brett, go. So Trey's uh, 12th man tackle, 1954 Cotton Bowl, Alabama Rice. Dick Rice did win the game. By yes. Oh, they ran game. away with it. Yeah. That was oh, that it. was it. Oh, we thought you had a clarification on the rule or something. No, like I that. can get the rule too. Okay. Yeah. He just wanted- All you were doing was clarifying that Trey was right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah! That was a serious Brett. letdown. How does he get his head in that studio? Yeah. A, I, I, I d- d- talk about dude just wanting to be on air. That is without Holy question. smokes. But we- hey, I want to be on air. Wait, I want to be on air. Trey is right. <laughs> By the way, we can't say this about Phil. He, uh, look, he, not at the U.S. Open, but he's had a lot of winning moments in his career. This was not one of them. Winning moments brought to you by La Quinta Inns and Suites. Book at LQ.com and win at business. All right. When we come back, I promise, we'll get to the Hall of Don't Famer. Promise. and a former. Yeah, probably not. I will strongly suggest mm-hmm. that we'll get to this story about a Hall of Famer and a former teammate of LeBron's who didn't take the own advice that he's giving to LeBron now. I don't know how else to say this, so I'll just say it. What is it, Linda? I think we should see other people. Are you breaking up with me on a roller coaster? Well, we do have a lot of fun. Maybe we should stay together. An emotional roller coaster? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to Geico. I just need a little me time. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Yeah, I'm 62 years old, and I've been playing and watching golf all my life. I love golf, but watching it sometimes gets boring. This was the greatest golf ever this weekend, ever. You never fell asleep. You never dozed off. You were so excited to see the next shot. You purist, shut up. <laughs> well, I, actually, the purists uh, are the ones that are yeah. on his side there. That's I'm, a little confused. not going to lie. I, I loved watching it. Sports Center brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. When a player doesn't like a contract, they hold out. Yep. Well, at Straight Talk Wireless... You never have to because there's no contract. Yeah. And they use the exact same 4G LTE towers as the big carries, but for a lot less. Straight Talk Wireless, only at Walmart. Refer to terms and conditions of service at straighttalk.com. All right, Golden Wingo with you. ESPN Radio, ESPN News, presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests on the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. And again, I'm glad we got that tweet from Carolina. We'll get into the, this LeBron story here in a second. But I'm glad we got that tweet because people are like, oh, these golfers, they're babied, they're all this kind of stuff. I don't know of another sport, Mike, maybe horse racing, if you're a jockey. If you don't do well, you're not going to get paid. Tennis. Tennis is also the same way. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, you can, you can, you can look at this and say, well, they're being babied by, they don't like people yelling in their backswing and all this kind of stuff. All that's true. Right. But they don't have contracts. These guys do not, I mean, yes, they have appearance, uh, they have apparel contracts right, and all right, that kind right, of stuff. Right, right. But the majority of those guys out there, if they don't play well enough to keep their tour card and make a living when you talk about all the travel that goes involved with this, the hotel expenses, paying your caddy, paying your swing coach, paying all that kind of stuff, if you don't make enough money, you can't do it. So you can say golfers are babied on one level, but on the other level, they are the complete opposite of that. They are, there's no guaranteed money in this thing. You have to play well or you get nothing. You get cut. You show up for the first two rounds of the U.S. Open, shoot nine over par, and you get a... Hey, thanks for being here. Yeah. And by the way, here's the thousand dollars that you need to take care of yourself to get your stuff back. Whatever country club living. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Both of those things are true. Uh, so Both be- of those be- things are before true. Before we get to Shaq's advice for LeBron, we have an update on the rule. We said what we're trying to think of comparisons of what Phil did. One of the things we brought up was uh, if a guy is running for an obvious touchdown, somebody coming off the sideline to tackle them and prevent that touchdown. Where I said the rule should be very easy: automatic touchdown, no matter what. Brett, you have the rules. Is this NFL or college? NFL. Uh-huh. So they have a great umbrella phrase for this. A palpably unfair act. Palpably? Palpably. Is that like a palpably? serious breach of etiquette in golf? Yeah, exactly. It sounds like it's the same. Holy How smokes. do you measure palpable? I, that, I don't know. I think that's just so they can do whatever they want. And it's, mm. a player or substitute shall not interfere with the play by any act which is palpably unfair. For a palpably unfair act, offender may be disqualified. The referee, after consulting with the officiating crew, enforces any distance penalty as they consider equitable and irrespective of any specified code penalty, they may award a score. So the referee Ooh. can do whatever they want. So they can award a score. 
Now that's interesting. See, and, and you know what? To, to me, it's too gray. Yeah. If a guy comes off, comes off on purpose, it's a score. Yeah. Make it that simple. It would make the, the one line instead of that whole paragraph. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, as we've seen with recent rule changes in the NFL, they tend to do things that are yeah. a little mm-hmm. opaque and get a little wordy on both sides. All right, uh, as we're continuing here, it's it is the summer of LeBron. It is LeBron mm-hmm. watch, and I think a lot of people. I know you don't want to hear this, but I think most people are thinking he's probably leaving. <laughs> yeah, Cleveland, right. It's probably going to happen. Well, Shaquille O'Neal, who played with LeBron in Cleveland, has some advice for LeBron. And it's advice he himself did not take. Yeah, it wasn't. Because he even said, this is Shaq talking, my problem toward the end of my career was I was trying to shut everybody up and I was greedy for more championships. Uh, He went on to say, Mm -hmm. and and after I got three titles, everybody was saying I couldn't get another. So I got four. After I got the fourth, they were saying I couldn't get another one. So I was just trying to make quick stops to get it. Phoenix, Phoenix. Cleveland, Boston. He won the three with L.A. with the Lakers. He won one in Miami, and then he didn't win another in the final three years of his 19-year career. So he was chasing those, he said, because others were saying, you know, you need more, you need more, you need more. And what he said is somebody told me a long time ago, they said, your book is already set before the later stages of your career. You can add index pages toward the end, but your book is already set. So LeBron, your book is already set don't go chasing the rings. That's basically what he's saying. And that look, that's an interesting self reflection <clears throat> from Shaq on mm-hmm. something he probably wishes he hadn't do, hadn't done. The only thing that I would ask you is it was clear that Shaq was on the tail end of his career and the tail end of his ability to yes, play at a yes. very high level. LeBron is still at the top of his game, best player in the world. He is thirty three <laughs> years old, fifteen years in. It's going to be his sixteenth season next year or this fall when the season starts. I mean, he's. To me, he was the MVP of the league. Shaq yeah. was never the MVP well, of the league or the guy. Shaq when he was, was going doing to this. teams to try and be a big piece of the puzzle. The final piece. LeBron is still the main piece. He's Correct. still the main guy to get those rings. So he's probably not. Yeah, you're right. In yeah. that position where Shaq was at the end of his career because of how well LeBron is playing. Does that change it at all for you in that situation? I, again, I don't. I don't mind what. He's doing, I, I understand it in the course of today's sports, though a lot of people are going to point right to the Washington Capitals and say, Alex Ovechkin. Right. Look what he did, man. Been there. Yeah! I, to. I don't blame you. By the way, He's do been we there. know if Tom Wilson has made it to Toronto yet? We should have made it. We should have been like parents and say, Tom, when Did you get you check home, in? call our producers and yeah. tell us you got home safely. Yeah. Uh, but, <laughs> but, you know, he stayed through all the losing to Pittsburgh and everything that went along with the Washington and the futility of all the Washington. He, a lot of people are, were like, that's the way you do it. Yeah. And there's, there's no one right way to do it. a way to do it. it. It is a way to do it. But, uh, you know, I, I understand this day and age of great players and what they now have the ability to team each other up instead of teams just having the ability to trade and put teams together. You know, it's interesting. I got into this great discussion. I'll use discussion because it was a little heated at times on Twitter about these, some people saying, well, you know, the, the NBA has ruined competitive balance because of these super teams. Yeah. I'm like, when have we not had super teams That's in exactly the NBA? Right. When has there ever been a scenario going back to the 50s? Or we haven't had super teams in the NBA. That's the way the league is built. So the only way you can be upset about these guys going around is that the players are doing it instead of the teams doing it exactly themselves. Right, yeah. And if you have a problem with that, then you got to ask why you have a problem with the players. Employees being able to dictate their own future. Coming up, should Mickelson have been disqualified? We'll ask our next To give batters a different look, pitchers throw a changeup. Your idea of a different look is sunglasses. That's true. But La Quinta Inns and Suites is really taking the different look thing to a new level. Definitely a major league makeover, starting with a bolder, brighter lobby full of comfortable spaces to let you settle in. Or chill out in front of a big, flat screen like Wingo would. Oh, you know it. It's a changing La Quinta look to help you get in the zone and look sharp when you hit that big meeting. Prepare to win at business with La Quinta Inns and Suites. Book now at LQ.com. Golik and Wingo with you on ESPN Radio and ESPN News. And that, of course, is the European cheer. They do that uh, in soccer games. We also do that. They also do that at the Ryder Cup a lot. Uh, I have to tell you this story now that they played this. I think the 2002 World Cup was in South Korea. You don't have to. Yeah, I do. Go ahead. World Cup was in South Korea. And we were doing the highlights, Kenny Main and I on the six o'clock sports center, and somebody scored, and you know, the biggest soccer fan in the building is Bob Lee. Oh yeah. So I went into a as soon as they scored, I just sang Bob Lee, Bob Lee, Bob Lee, Bob Lee. <laughs> Bob Lee, Bob that was it. I did it for like thirty seconds on the soccer highlight. Right. A a high ranking ESPN executive 
came down to the newsroom and said, yeah, you probably shouldn't be doing that. Probably anymore. don't do that anymore. <laughs> yeah. I was scolded for calling out oh, Bob Lee. One and done on that. Love. Yeah, it was. Yeah, Actually, yeah. I think we did it twice and then they said, yeah, really? You That's need it. To, yeah. You need to stop. So whenever I hear that song, I what think of my friend, the general. We're Bob Sweden Lee. and South Korea playing right now. Nil, nil, nil on that nil. one. That's me against Junior as far as our teams are concerned. Our team scoring. Our staff is in first with 10 points. Devin and that's my son a, that's a have short-lived thing. eight points. Trey, you and I have six points. Uh, we're we ramping up. World Cup over the weekend. We have new basketball news with Kawhi Leonard wanting out of San Antonio as the reports, and certainly what went on at the U.S. Open, which we'll get into with Brad Faxon in a few minutes. We absolutely will, but first we will get into <laughs> what's trending. And how about this in baseball? Jack Flaherty and four relievers combined on a four-hitter. Matt Carpenter homered, and the St. Louis Cardinals beat the Cubs 5 nothing to avoid the sweep on Sunday Night Baseball, Mike, on ESPN and ESPN Radio. Javier Baez gets hit in the elbow in this one for the, the Cubs shortstop, but he said after the game, just sore, he's going to be fine, no worries there. The best thing that happened in this game was after the game, and it involved Joe Madden, which isn't a yes. stunner because Joe is, is usually good like this. So as you mentioned in it, they stopped from being swept in a three-game series. So what does that mean? That means how many of the Cubs win of the three? They took two out of three. They took two out of three. So Joe Madden, before, as the press was there, before he started taking questions, he actually played this for the press. Well, uh, how, how uh, great is that? But Stanzik just got me here. What is this song is about? He's, it's, it's him talking to a woman <clears throat> and his three things are, I want you, yeah, I need, need you, you, but I'm never, never going to love you. Yeah, right. So it's basically. I'm down, but not for yeah. like, the full term. Paradise by the Dashboard Light is probably one of, that, one of that's my... That's basically... Stancing yeah. is incredulous. Yeah. That's what he got. got two out of three is what Meatloaf is saying. You got two out of the three, and then, you know, that's that's well, there, better than most. There wasn't a man you get who... get 66%. There wasn't a man who sweated more on stage than Meatloaf. <laughs> oh, like a bat out of hell, Oh, man. my... Yeah, well hey, done. But go. Joe Madden played that song for the media before yeah. he started talking to him. I love the it's fact... It's like, that's... hey... Yeah. Okay, we lost this game, but we won two out of three. Good. Two out of three. We're good. That was awesome. Awesome, I, I, Joe Madden. I think thing. I just opened Stanzik's eyes. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. To a whole new world. <laughs> we continue what's trending, and uh, there's no two out of three when the Astros, they, these knobs go to 11. Uh, they took their streak to 11, winning, uh, the longest mate in the majors this season with a 7-4 win Sunday at Kansas City. Only four reigning World Series champions have posted a longer winning streak over the last 80 seasons. Been talking about Seattle being at the top of the division the way they were. Now Houston, a game and a half up there. We'll see how much back and forth that goes. If the Angels can get back into this, they've fallen back some. Uh, uh, so where they're going to end up. In this streak, the Astros have outscored their opponents 81 to 40. They're hitting 327, 49 extra base hits, and 21 home runs. So it, it has been And oh, by the way, they have a... really good pitching, too. Yeah. I mean, really, really impressive what's going on with them right now. Again, the last uh, World Series champ to have this long of a streak was the Orioles in 1971. They also completed a 10 nothing road trip. And it is the world's game and the world stage, and Mexico did something that no one from CONCACAF had ever done before on the World Cup stage, <laughs> taking down Germany the defending champs and the prohibitive favorites won nothing. Yeah, uh, it's their first win versus a defending World Cup champ at the World Cup for Germany. It was the first ever shutout loss in a World Cup opener. As Taylor Twelman, who was in with us before uh, a little while ago, said, for Germany, this is just going to wake them up. Yeah, you know, no worries about them and their mental Don't state. Don't make Germany angry on a DOS uh, sound machine. On what what they're going to do? They're just going to roll. You know, he thinks they'll get roll through, not roll, but win their next two games, yep. get their six points, and and move on um, out of the group. But uh, certainly was a stunner. Certainly a stunner and, and good for you yes. as far as uh, the draft is concerned. It, it helped me with my team and helped me offset the Cristiano Ronaldo hat trick that just totally boned me on the uh, That was game. his hat trick before his second goal as I was watching that game. The, the announcers even started talking about how visibly upset he was that they weren't getting him the ball. Yeah. He was getting frustrated and upset. Next thing you know, they get him the ball and he scores the second before he gets the third one on the free kick. So what you're saying, there were a lot of people upset and he was very upset with yeah, his action. he was upset. Well, he wasn't the only one over the no. weekend. No. Uh, and for that in mind, let's bring in our next guest as we are presented by Progressive Insurance and all phone guests join us on the Shell Pennzoil performance line, including someone who saw some people get very upset over mm. the weekend at the U.S. Open in Chinnacock Hills, and that would be a former tour player and Fox Sports Golf analyst Brad Faxon joins us now on the Shell Penzoil Performance Line. Brad, first of all, thanks for being with us this morning. I, I, I guess as an overall picture, 10 years from now, what are we talking about at Shinnecock when we look back at the 118th playing of the U.S. Open? Kepka repeating, uh, the USGA once again having some issues with the setup like they did in 2004, or what 
was now a verb, somebody Mickelsoning like he did on the 13th green. <laughs> oh, my. Um, well, as a golfer, I, I hope we're talking about Brooks Kepka and, and back-to-back open wins and how rare that is. You know, the last guy to ever do that was Curtis Strange in 88, 89, and think about how long ago that was, and then before that, Ben Hogan. So, I mean, I know this world works in a funny way, but it's really impressive what he did, but it's really impressive that the USGA had 14 years to not do it again, and they right. did. They did. They absolutely well, did. So along those lines, Brad, going back to your career on the course, have you, in watching what they were doing and seeing how this course was on Saturday, can you compare it to X amount of rounds that you had during your career of where a course was this tough? There's no doubt. Every every player, when they go to U.S. Open, they know it's going to be tough, and they know it's going to be different. And, and it's, it's tough and different at, at every site you go to, and you know, what made Shinnecock so much more difficult or different than everything else was not that there's heavy rough, not that there's blowing wind, but these closely mown areas around the greens were driving people batty. And, you know, if you watch some of the telecasts, we have uh, a great, great um, golf course architect named Gil Hans, and Hans is an authority and a historian on the game and architecture. And we kind of tried to figure out if – those closely mown areas were in an original or integral part of the golf course back in the early 1900s when William Flint did a design, and we don't know. And the USJ made it awkward, you know, for a lot of these shots into long, you know, long par five, like, like number five, or the 10th hole that became one of the silliest holes in, in 2004. So it, it, it wears on you mentally, it wears on you physically, and I didn't like that setup. But Tom Lehman called me after Saturday's round just in a tirade about how the USGA has gone away from what's traditional. So, yeah, there's a lot of questions there for sure. No, hey, listen, he's not the only one. I was talking to Andy North over the weekend, and he was like, the USGA, the USGA needs to find out what the identity of the U.S. Open wants to be. He felt like this was an open championship venue uh, with U.S. Open uh, setup, which may, makes it almost impossible because of the weather you can get off the ocean. Brad Faxon with us from Fox Sports. How much, Brad, do you think this was an overreaction to what they saw a year ago at Aaron Hills where there was no wind and it was a birdie fest? I mean, we shot a uh, – uh, Justin Thomas shot a 63, had a chance for a, a, a 62, and then Brooks Kepka wins at 16 under, which I'm sure boils the blood of the USGA. Well, their experiment at Aaron Hills, which, by the way, is a beautiful place, resort, golf course, you know, it backfired for, for those two reasons, that they didn't get the wins they were expecting. The golf course was a little bit soft, and they had these massively wide fairways. And when you have a player or players that are on with their tee shot, like Brooks Kepka was and Justin Thomas, I mean, he could have shot 62 to shoot 10 under the U.S. Open. It's almost unthinkable. Right. And, you know, think about Fox's um, luck here. The last four years when we started – covering the USGA's events, we haven't seen a tree in four years. I mean, Chambers Bay had one tree. Had the one, yeah. <laughs> you know, we, we were at uh, Oakmont, which got rid of the thousands of trees they had. And that was one of those traditional tree-lined golf courses. And then Aaron Hills, no trees. And frankly, Shinnecock had none either. They had 500 removed, and it looks spectacular. It's universally one of the best courses on the planet. And it's just funny how, how things have changed. You know, and guys like Lehman or guys like Andy North, whom you mentioned before, they they liked it when you got bloody after a round. You know, 22 yards wide fairways, thick rough off the edge of the fairway. So the premium was on accuracy. And today's players that are hitting it so far, and, and you saw that with Kepka, you saw it with Dustin Johnson and for Tony Finau, the second longest hitter on the tour, Week to week, they don't get challenged like they do at a U.S. Open. The premium on accuracy isn't there, and there's got to be some adaptation to it. I know there's a million people calling for an adjustment in equipment and rolling back, which is a very complicated issue. But you you see the scores go up when there's heavy rough down the fairway and the choices players make. And uh, the two hardest par fours, three and 14, Guys like Dustin Johnson are hitting two irons off there because they know the importance of the fairway, and I think the USGA has to get that back. Talking to uh, Fox Golf Analyst Brad Faxon on the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line, and, and obviously we're going to get to Phil, but let's talk about the champ, uh, Brooks Kepka here. Uh, back-to-back first time since Curtis Strange at the end of the 80s, 
And he had even said, or saw a quote from him that said, a lot of times people don't know about him or he's flying under the radar. Is he still flying under the radar or is, is it about time he gets noticed on the radar? Well, the, the, all the players on the tour are certainly, you know, know about Brooks Kepkin and, and kind of like Andy North. You know, here's a guy that's won two of the U.S. Opens and he, he doesn't show up on the leaderboard regularly or consistently like some of the other guys like Justin Thomas and Jordan Spieth do. But, I mean, this is a prototypical new golfer now, you know, spending this time in the gym as part of his training. And I'm not so sure that this is the right thing for everybody to do, get in there and, and pump all these heavy weights uh, in the morning you're going to play a final round. What what I think is he's he's really got this, you know, situation with Joey Dio Vesalvi, who's a great – uh, the trainer that travels with these guys and he and Dustin Johnson do this every day they're at home. So it's hard to believe that a final round of a US Open could be kind of a casual walk in the park for these two. And uh, the camaraderie they have, what they share and the competitiveness is what's really helping Kepka as he's, as he's watched his idol and kind of his big brother, Dustin Johnson work out. And uh, you know, it's going to affect generations of golfers to come thinking that they need to be, you're looking like Kepka. Kepka looks like he could be a, a linebacker in the NFL. Absolutely. And uh, I, I said earlier, Brad, on the show, I think Kepka's resting heart rate out there looks like it's about 12. Uh, just nothing seems to really bother him, which certainly no. helps him. And Gary Player, by the way, you know somewhere Gary Player is saying, see, I told you guys this in the 60s. Lift weights, do all this stuff, and good things will happen to you on the golf course. Um, I would have thought we would have seen some tweets by Gary Player by now. Ab- for sure. Absolutely. Uh, okay, but we have to get to the Phil Mickelson situation because it's obviously been something that is everybody in the golf world is talking about, and it's been a very polarizing topic, Brad, outside the insular world of golf. What was your reaction, A, on what he did, and then B, on his explanation for it? Well, it was such a strange situation, wasn't it? I mean, I said on my opening yesterday when we went on the air at 10 o'clock, I was sitting with Shane Baker that I believe it, it, it wasn't premeditated, but I think something was calculated there. And a little bit like the interview he did in the press room at Glen Eagles in 2014 at the Ryder Cup and his you know, sideways attack on Tom Watson, the captain, this was a stab back at the USGA. He, he's worked so hard this month to try and win a, a U.S. Open, 48 years old, six times second place, four times second place in New York. And a course that he knows well, a course that he thinks he can win on, a game that's improved. He had a final round, 65 at Memphis the week before. And he's a real surveyor and of the golf courses, the strategizer, how to play it. And he doesn't ever want to get outsmarted. And when the course got on the borderline like it did on Saturday, uh, Phil just flipped his switch. I call it under the influence of golf. You know, it's just <laughs> like you, you've let the game kind of make you crazy. And I, I don't think what he did was very rational, uh, but he certainly proved a point. I think a lot of players are, are probably standing up cheering for him. A lot of fans are, are thinking the same thing. And then there's a lot of people that you're like, holy crap, he just did this. And Brandel Shambly said it on Golf Channel, can you imagine Jack Nicholson, Arnold Palmer, or Ben Hogan ever, ever doing anything like that? Well, I mean, we've heard Brad people say that his legacy is forever changed. This will never leave him. Will always be part of him. This is going to hurt his legacy. Are are you going that far with this? Is this is this going to damage his legacy? Well, I, I went to bed that night thinking, I wonder if he's going to show up tomorrow. I really do, and you know, it blew up on him a little bit, and. I I think that it's going to be lasting. I still think Phil is a, is a talented enough guy to, to win a major at 48 or into his 50s. Bones Mackay, his ex-caddy, thinks this guy still has his game ready to play. And I think the over-preparation that he did, it just got into his head a little too much. I think he was he was trying to control some of the uncontrollables, a little bit like maybe Justin Rose, who, who's another hardworking guy trying to, figure out every edge or every corner to uh, peek around. And no, those guys, are they're trying so hard it gets in the way. At, at some point, you got to let it go a little bit. And you never feel like that's happening to Brooks Kepka. But going back to your point about Phil, 
I think so. I, the, the, the old guard here tur- definitely turned in their graves. Oh, I, no question about that. As we're talking to Brad Faxon. So we had this discussion earlier because I think, uh, Brad, what made it worse is what he said to his playing partner and the standard bearer and then what he said in the interview with Curtis Strange after after the round where he said, well, you know, I knew it was a two-stroke penalty and I've been waiting to use that to my advantage for a long time. And that sounds great and like Phil is using the rules to his advantage as the, the old saying is the rules are there to help the golfer. But then you go back to what Beef Johnson, his playing partner, said he heard him say, which was, I have no idea what I just did, just give me what I got. So it seems like uh, he, he kind of made it worse for himself by by saying something that maybe wasn't true about why he did what he did. Well, he was trying to rationalize to, to the to golfing world, no question about it. He brought up the, the 15th hole at Augusta National. If you had a putt that was going down uh, the hill towards the water, you could stop it like that. And, you know, the USGA has a bunch of rules that are, you know, threaded there between different, you know, <laughs> parts of the alphabet that you could never pick up and, and you've never heard of before. And then they they, they organized this committee because they don't ever want the fault to go to one person. And I, they they took the easy way out and said, we're not going to penalize him or DQ him any more than the two shots because, frankly, nobody's ever seen anything like that. I mean, Should he have been well, DQ'd? Yeah, I was going to say, wouldn't it be simple now to make the rule, you stop the ball or you hit the ball, you're done? I mean, it was, shouldn't it be that there easy? There is a rule in there like that. Well, there's a rule that there is a penalty penalty for hitting a moving ball. And let's just say it, it could happen to any of us as we're standing over a ball. Let's just say in pine straw, you start your swing and you, you know, maybe you ground your club on the way back, and then the ball teeters on the edge of these pine straws, and it starts to roll as you're in the middle of the swing, and then you hit it. The ball's moving. That's a penalty. But there was an intent to hit the moving ball, like there was with Phil. Right. And he definitely did it to gain you know, a position rather than let the ball to continue to run out. Maybe that ball would have rolled off the green and around the corner of the bunker, like you said in his interview afterwards, and it, it would have been an advantage to him to not have to watch that whole thing. And he was already playing poorly. That was a, a bogey putt, I believe, in the first place. But he simply could have called it unplayable and re it from where he was. He didn't have to go and hit the ball like – he was hitting a one time. Right. <laughs> well, funny to watch. well, that is the one thing that's lost in here is how bad that first putt actually was. I mean, it was, I mean, the, the putt that he stopped, it was really, he hammered that thing. There's no question about that. But the, to your point, Brad, and we don't want to get too bogged down in this because we've been talking about it all morning, but there is the rule for a two stroke for hitting a moving ball, but then there's a rule that can be a disqualification for stopping a ball from moving. And it certainly seemed like he did that as much as he did hit a moving ball. There's no, no doubt about it. He, he knew where that ball was going to end up. He, I, I really don't think he knew the rules well enough to know that if he had stopped it, that would have been worse than hitting it while it was moving. My guess is he doesn't because I don't think he knew he was going to come smash the ball back like that because nobody knew. You know, He hadn't been there before. He hadn't seen other players putt on that hole. He didn't know how that ball could go rolling off. I don't think he's that aware of the whole situation. This looked so reactionary and spontaneous. But it was to prove his point, like I said in the beginning. So al- along those lines, we just finished that, what we saw this weekend, especially Saturday. The tour comes to Hartford now for the Travelers. Over under minus 20 is the winning score. <laughs> <laughs> probably take the under uh, by a little bit. But it, they, the Travelers has the greatest field they've ever seen. Kepka's going to play there. Rory McIlroy's playing there again. Speed won last year, so th- this looks like a major championship back to back on a very user friendly golf course. That's for sure. Uh, it, it looks like it's going to be a great time. And look, it was a bizarre U.S. Open and a great U.S. Open all rolled up into one. All right, before we let you go, Brad, you know the the greens at uh, at Shinnecock were sort of like the greens you see at Piners Number Two, where if you don't land it on the certain spot, it's just going to roll right off either back down to you or back the other side of the green. Golik and I are taking on Pinehurst number two on yeah. Friday. Do you have any words of advice besides don't yip it? <laughs> don't yip it. I don't know what you guys like to do when you're chipping, but I like to keep those shots along the ground. Forget trying to hit those big old spinners that you see some of those guys did. Uh, Dustin Johnson hit a shot on the seventh hole, that short par three, the Redan green, where he hit it to the right and down the hill. And then he took out his 64-degree wedge and hit this low spinner to a you know, about three feet. He unfortunately missed that putt, but 
that's a really skillful shot. I can't. I, I don't know who I'd put my money on. I, Trey, I think I'm going to put it on you. I hate to say that. There you go. Well, Come well, on, baby. Let's well, go. Here's the deal. Sorry, Mike. Here, that, that's okay, Brad, because when I'm Mickelson, the, 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 the putts I hit, no one's going to care. And that's exactly what I'm going to do out there. <laughs> that, that is, and I will, I will let you have that because you'll probably be line eight. So we're yeah, okay. True. We'll be good. Facts, we appreciate well, you. Need you. To, when, hey, when you go to Pinehurst, you got to play Gil Hans. Uh, designed a new short course there. Oh, we're, we are. We're playing, playing the cradle. We're playing, we're playing that as well. We're playing the cradle Saturday morning. Yep. Absolutely. You got it. All right, Brad, awesome. thanks so much, man. Appreciate you. Thanks, Brad. Thank you. All right, See Brad, Brad Faxon, and he knows. He knows the cradle's going to be good. Uh, here's here's what I've changed. Uh, what, what's going to happen really quickly when we play there is if my ball hits the green, yeah. even if it rolls off, I'm mm-hmm. still putting it back on the green where it hit. I'll let you know. Okay? Try. Is that okay? It is. Just And South Korea just got absolutely screwed by a call out there to give Sweden a penalty kick and went up one nothing. That's oh, just come on. wrong. Sweden, what happened? Sweden buried that one for ABBA and Bjorn Borg, baby. Let's horrible, go. Horrible, horrible call. Is your home an ADT home? If not, you have to get ADT and help protect against break-ins, fire, and carbon monoxide. For a limited time, get ADT's lowest rate starting at just $28.99 a month from the most trusted name in home security. Go to ADT.com slash podcast to take advantage of ADT's lowest rate. With 36-month monitoring contract, early termination and installation fees apply. Excludes taxes and fees. Applies to traditional services only. Certain markets excluded. Licenses available at ADT.com. Hey everyone, Mike Golick here. Support for the Golick Wingo podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Chances are you're confident when it comes to your work, your hobbies, your life. Rocket Mortgage gives you that same level of confidence when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your existing home loan. Rocket Mortgage is simple, allowing you to fully understand all the details and be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash mics. Equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, NMLS, consumeraccess.org number 3030. We're <laughs> delighted to be joined now by Charles Barkley, Basketball Hall of Famer. Uh, Charles, how much pressure was there on Family Feud? A ton of pressure. When you only have a couple of seconds and they're going to put that little X up, it was very nerve-wracking. It was a lot of fun. Shout out to Steve Harper and all those people. But, man, it is nerve-wracking. I got to admit that. It's Especially, I got Shaq, who's not the brightest bulb in the shop also. <laughs> and that's another thing that, and, and, and I, did, I didn't see this, but when, when somebody gives an answer that's obviously a bad answer, I always hate when everybody else on the team claps. Someone needs you to say, you know, that was a stupid answer. Why would you say something like that? You know what, man? It, but, you know, Golik, it is so stressful, though, because, number one, you're trying to listen to what they're going to say. Cause you don't want to – You can't. obviously, you can't say the same stupid answer. Right. So you have to wait what they're going to say, then come up with your answer quickly. Uh, it, it does seem nerve-wracking. Time, time is of yes, the essence. There's yes. no question oh, about so that. Fun. Charles Barkley, Basketball Hall of Famer, does a great job on TNT, is with us this morning. Speaking of Shaq, mm. you guys do a great job on the show. He had some words of advice for LeBron. Basically, don't chase the ring like I did at the end of my career. We're obviously, Charles, in the summer of LeBron. What do you think, what advice would you give LeBron about the decision he's going to make next? Uh, stay in Cleveland. Uh, he's a legend there. He's not going to enhance his legacy. Uh, in my opinion, he's one of the five or six, seven greatest players ever. Uh, winning another ring as a mercenary ain't going to enhance his legacy. Uh, I agree with Shaq, and I think Shaq understands. Uh, he made a mistake ring chasing at the end, and his, and his career didn't end the way he wanted to. Uh, so I agree with Shaq. Listen, uh, we can debate. Uh, we've been through this with Kobe when they get close to Michael. Listen, Michael is to go. Then Kobe and LeBron are right there uh, on his coattails, but none of them ever gonna catch him. Because if, like I said, if he goes to the Lakers or Celtics or somewhere else, he'll be a mercenary. He won't be a, a Cleveland legend like that. Winning that one championship was worth two, in my opinion, when he was there. So I hope he stays in Cleveland. Uh, I do. I hope he stays in Cleveland. The guy's an amazing person. He's an amazing player. But he doesn't need another ring to justify his greatness. His leg, his legacy is secure already. Speaking as someone born and raised in Cleveland, I hope he stays in Cleveland as well. And and this is going to play itself out, as we'll see on the, the monster stage. But something that got added to it, Charles, how surprised are you at how this Kawhi Leonard situation is kind of unfolding with maybe he doesn't want to be in San Antonio anymore? Well, that's just disappointing uh, for me as a guy who was the Spurs. They, they're the best organization. I think they're the best organization we've ever had in the NBA. I mean, the Celtics have won more championships, but they had all the great players. 
uh, back in the day. Uh, what the Bulls did is amazing. What the Warriors are doing is amazing because, you know, they got the best players. But what they've done in San Antonio, a small market for the last 20 years, the way they have did it, you know, you go back, they won the first championship with uh, David Robinson, their best player. Then they won the next couple with Tim Duncan. Then they went to Tony Parker and Ginobili. Then they went to Kawhi Leonard to win with so many different styles, to go from big to little and be just a class organization and win all those 50 games every year. I'm disappointed he wants to leave the best organization in the NBA. As Charles Barkley is with us, Charles, if this were any other superstar in any other city, uh, would this be a much bigger story about how this unfolded the entire year? Because Kawhi never speaks, and San Antonio is a is a smaller market, and they just seem to win all the time. So it, it sort of felt like, well, we'll just see how this all plays out. Imagine if this was some other superstar in a different city. How much bigger or different would we be looking at this story? Well, I think the thing, uh, Greeny, is it just happened so suddenly. Trey, actually. Because Greeny's, Greeny's Trey, no longer I'm with I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My bad. Clyde, I apologize. Clyde, it's okay. Don't worry about it. It's all good. <laughs> but, but, uh, my bad. But so I think it just came out of nowhere so suddenly. Because I think everybody assumed it was going to work out. Then Kawhi drops the bombshell Friday at <laughs> at the end of the day. So I, I think it just kind of caught everybody off guard. And listen, I, I blame Kawhi for a lot of his stuff. If he wants to leave, he got to come out and say he wants to leave. Mm-hmm. We don't even know if this stuff is true yet. I'm not disparaging any other reporter. They've got quote-unquote their sources. If he wants to leave, just say, hey, I've had enough of San Antonio. Uh, don't use the doctor's excuse. I, I think that's cowardly using the doctor's excuse. And listen, I hear the, he's upset that the Spurs misdiagnosed it. You think the San Antonio Spurs really wanted to make a mistake on arguably the second or third best player in the world? They might Listen, they might have screwed up. I don't know the answer to that question. But this notion that they tried to do this to alienate one of the two or three best players in the world is laughable. Just say, hey, just sit down. If it doesn't work, just say, hey, listen, you know what? I want to go to a bigger market. Uh, I want to make more money, and I want to be able to compete with the, the, the Warriors. Just say that. Don't say, I'm, I've lost trust in the Spurs because the doctor misdiagnosed me. First, first of all, I tell you, I warn every professional doctor. My personal doctor is Dr. James Andrews. He's the best doctor in the world. Every time I got hurt, every single time I got hurt, I listened to the team doctor first. Then I took all my MRIs and x-rays to Dr. Andrews. Every NBA or NFL player should always have their own personal doctor look at their x-rays and MRIs. Correct. Uh, I, I respect the team doctors, but their job is to get you back out there. But I'm disappointed they're trying to say they're upset because the doctor misdiagnosed his, his quad injury. Listen, they might have mis- made a mistake, but they wasn't trying to do it to alienate Kawhi Leonard. Man, I'm disappointed you do one interview about your gambling habits and you call me Greeny. I was a little upset about that. I'm not going to be honest with you. Uh, as Charles Barkley is with us as we move on, seriously, though, if you had a team of LeBron, Kawhi, and Paul George, could this be a team in Los Angeles that could that could deal with the Warriors? They'd be really good. Uh, but the problem they're going to have is they're probably going to give everybody up on their team to get Kawhi. Uh, that's the first thing. I mean, Kawhi is a great and what you going to, so right now you're probably starting out with just three players because you're going to, you listen, and I'm not sure there's anybody on the Lakers team good enough for me to want to take. Uh, well, let me rephrase that. There's nobody on the Lakers team that I want to take two or three of for Kawhi Leonard. Right. Uh, they're, they're not any good. Uh, so I'm not taking any of those players. But my biggest thing is, uh, if I'm not, if I'm the uh, San Antonio Spurs, I'm not going to help the Lakers build a super team. That just makes no sense whatsoever. So, like I said, number one, they don't have any players the Spurs want, uh, I don't think, in my opinion. Because uh, they got to look, give up probably two or three players. And I look at that roster, I'm like, they got some decent players. But you, there's not three or four players on that team you look at and say, okay, if we get these guys. And apparently he went on a massive swear rant. That's wow. what just happened. Wow. I think we lost his phone. Is he there? Oh, oh we, we got you. you. We okay. got him? Okay, we, we got thought you, you lost it. Yeah. Yeah. Continue. Yeah, but uh, listen, but the main thing, I don't understand, because, uh, you know, obviously the big elephant in the room is LeBron, uh, but I'm not going to help the Lakers build a super team. Uh, that makes no sense whatsoever and play against them for the next 
five to ten years. So I, I don't see him going to L.A. in any shape, form whatsoever. And it may, maybe it looks like when the Celtics tried to trade for Kawhi right. in February, if they may come after Danny Ainge may get involved. But they certainly have some talented players uh, to head over to San Antonio. As far as speaking of talented players and young players, looking at the draft, and more more to the type of player in today's game, Charles, you have Luka Doncic, the 6'8", uh, guard who can pass the ball incredibly well. Along the lines, you look at a guy like Ben Simmons, the tall point guard that can pass the ball, though Ben doesn't shoot very well. But that tall guy who can pass it, or DeAndre Ayton, that seven foot one guy that can shoot the three or play in inside as well. Which do you go for if you're playing? If you're putting together a team in the NBA today? Well, I've been talking to a lot of these NBA general managers when I was scouting for getting ready for March Madness. I told them last year that Josh Jackson, Jason Tatum, Dennis Smith Jr., uh, Donovan Mitchell were the four best players that I saw uh, doing my scouting, getting ready. This year, I told them, first of all, you'd be a fool to pass on DeAndre Aiden. Uh, you'd be a fool, a fool to pass on uh, Mo Bamba. I think those are the two best players in the draft, uh, period. Uh, I, I, I like uh, Wendell Carter from Duke and Bagley from Duke. Uh, and I like Jackson from Michigan State, but those are the five best players that I saw when I was getting ready. Uh, but Aiden and Bamba are the two best. Those other three guys, uh, Bagley, Carter, and Jackson are very good. I think they got a chance of being very good, but I'm not passing on, uh, Aiden or Bamba, period, if I got one or two. Yeah, just the wingspan of Bamba is absolutely Incredible. insane and yeah. in how much floor he can cover defensively. Charles Barkley is with us. Charles, before we let you go, we know you have a love-hate relationship with golf. What did you think of the U.S. Open? Ooh, man. You know, I, uh, I felt bad because I felt bad because we're talking more about, uh, Phil Mickelson, uh, in the golf course, and we are about what a great performance uh, Brooks put up. Right. So, man, it, the course got out of hand clearly. Uh, but listen, what Phil? Listen, I love Phil, but he was wrong. But I think people overreacting to it. He he made a mistake. Let's move on. Uh, but I, people aren't talking about what Brooks Kep, Brooks Kepta did. I mean, he's been he's been unbelievable. Uh, it's hard to imagine though. That he's won more majors than regular golf tournaments. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He's got two U.S. Opens and yeah, one other win. Management. Yeah. In uh, the Waste Management Open in Phoenix. That's a crazy stat. You know, I'm a big Bruce Kepler fan. You know, I, I think most people close to me, you guys are, are friends with me, but you don't know me. You know, I have a sleeping disorder. I don't sleep a lot. Yeah. Join the club. So, <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm always up watching golf on a European tour. So Bruce Kepler and Peter Uline, I started following them about five or six years ago. <laughs> when they were both playing overseas, and I was like, that's the way, if I was a college player, I think that's the way I would try to get to the PGA Tour, to just go over Europe and rough it for a couple years. Because I saw Uline and Bruce Kepta, you know, you're always going to play in crappy weather. Right. You probably got to worry about where you're going to get a good meal. I think that toughens you up for the long haul. Well, and listen, Kepka plays out there like he's asleep. Uh, so, I mean, nothing seems to bother him. See, this is why I like talking to Charles. You always learn something new when yeah, you, you have do. an interview with Charles wow. Barkley. Uh, Chuck, we, we appreciate you being with us. Ho Grant, great to have you on the show. Today, man. Thank you so much. Uh, so, hey, hey, uh, hey, uh, Greedy Wingo, thanks for having me. <laughs> you got it, brother. Charles Barkley thanks, Charles. with us on the show. Always great. I just saved hundreds of dollars by switching to Geico. I feel like a whole new person. Disclaimer, you will not become a whole new person. This is impossible. You might be able to join a gym or diet program, buy a new wardrobe, get hair implants, but your DNA and physical form will remain the same. Geico waives any and all liability if you attempt to become a new person, except a cyborg. If you choose to become a half-human, half-cybernetic organism with lasers for eyes, the Geico legal team would be cool with that because, quote, laser eyes are pretty sweet. Pew, 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 end quote. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. All right, so we continue on Golden and Wingo, presented by Progressive Insurance. We're also brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. Upgrade to shaving with a fresh blade whenever you want for a fraction of the price. Join dollarshaveclub.com today. So we're starting this new thing uh, on Mondays, uh, Mike. It's basically who won the weekend. Uh, the odds and the uh, the list is varied. We have Brooks Kepka, mm -hmm. Mexico, right. the Lakers, Cristiano Ronaldo, the Astros winning their 11th straight, 
Uh, Jay Z and Beyonce apparently their new album, the video was shot in the Louvre yeah, in I mean, Paris. Uh, Rock solid there. They've been winning for a while. They have. Uh, <laughs> the Incredibles two yeah. biggest opening for an animated film uh, in a long time, one hundred eighty five million domestic. That is amazing. Crazy. I, I haven't funny. seen. It. I can't wait to see it. I I I would like. It's about forty five million more than uh, Finding Dory, which yeah. had the record. Uh, so so you're you're winning the weekend. Who is it? I mean, I I would lean to Mexico. Yeah. It's either Mexico or Kepka, one yeah. of the, one of those two. Uh, um, by the way, they both sound like countries if you think about it. Yeah, about you want to go to Mexico or you want to go to Kepka? What's the capital? Where of do you Kepka? want to go? What's the capital of Ke- Brooks? Yes. Yeah. Brooks is the capital there you of go. Kepka. I'm going to because it was so difficult, and you have to have somebody you know go through it for four days and the ups and downs. I'm going to go with Kepka. You know what? I think I am as well. And our fine researcher Brett has given me some information. <laughs> Brett, would you like to share the information, of or you want me to would. do it? Are you kidding? No, you're great at reading. You got it. Uh, thank you very much. This is from our great researcher, Brett. Sundays in the 60s at the U.S. Open the last four years. Brooks Kepka has done it four straight years. Nobody, uh, three, six guys have done it twice. 36 guys have done it once. 132 guys have done it zero times. So in other words, basically four straight Sundays, he's at 60s at the U.S. Open. That's it's impressive. Just, which is a nice way of saying he's going to be good at U.S. Opens for a long, long time. That's impressive. I, I feel like Dustin Johnson and Brooks Kepka are going to be in every U.S. Open for the next 10 years. We know right? where else will be together in the yeah. gym. Yes. They, do, they are good friends and they do work out together. Because they want to pump you up. There you go. <laughs> How about your bench? Oh, that, you know that's the conversation. Absolutely you right. You know that's the conversation. Well, congrats to him and all those others that you mentioned. And as Tommy well Fleetwood, by the way, could have been in that conversation yes. as well. And could, Tunisia. Could Record tying 63. But most importantly, we'll find out if Tunisia wins Monday. There you go. Go England! England is the key to my early World Cup success. I'm sad. We'll see you later.